Hey everybody, welcome back to Motion UX. Today we're going to talk about using GIFs inside of our Figma prototypes to help them feel a bit more realistic. Let's dive in. Here we are inside of Figma and we have this prototype set up of this flow for a flashcard creation app. And if we jump into the flow, we can create a set, we name it, we type in some words that generate some images to match with those words. Um, we want to change this blueberry photo to something else and we save this up. And this moment right here is where we really want to add a lot of excitement and a little bit more realistic representation of what the celebration moment could be like for the customer in this experience. Right now it's just static vectors and we want to really enhance that by maybe putting a GIF of an animated celebration happening right here. We're going to go ahead and select this screen here and send it over to After Effects. It imports everything along with the reference images to make sure things are lining up more or less how they should be. And it's working pretty well. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to delete some of those things. And we really only need this element right here. We don't need any of the text because that will be static on the actual Figma frame. So we really want this to generate a little bit of excitement for the customer as they're in this point in the experience. They've just created a whole set of flashcards. They hit save and we want this to kind of burst and then fade into the home screen so they can actually start using their flashcards up. These circles that we have here are really just illustrative. They're trying to tell in a static way what the animation will be. We can go ahead and delete these outer two rings because we will base everything off of this ring right here. And let's go ahead and name our layers so we can say that's the check mark and this is the circle. And what we wanna do is we want this to kind of fade in. We want it to come in, maybe it checks and when it checks, maybe it explodes a little bit and then it fades into the next screen. So let's first start with this circle. Let's do a scale animation. We can tap S for scale, holding Command and Shift and tapping the right arrow that jumps us forward 10 frames at a time. And I'll just go ahead and one, two, three, 30 frames in the future is, how it, is when it's going to appear at this size. And if we go back, we're gonna start it at maybe 25%. And so if we go ahead and we play that, we can see it's just growing. We want to make sure that we apply some good easing here. And I will be using flow just to maintain some consistency with my easings. And I'm using an enter type of easing where it's starting very, very fast and ending very, very slow. And if we actually wanted to go ahead and do that in our graph editor, we could select these two keyframes and you can see that we have the identical curve right here and we can edit it as we please. You can see that if we use the scale property that's under transform here on this layer, when we scale it up, you can see that it's actually scaling up the stroke as well. We don't want that. We want our stroke to maintain its thickness throughout because you may be working with a specific icon that's part of a icon set for your design system and the stroke weight matters so that it's consistent across all of these icons. But to make that more consistent, we can go ahead and remove the scale effect that we've done right there and actually use the ellipse path size. And if we scale this up and down, all this is doing is scaling up the actual path and it does not affect this, the stroke width. And so this is what we're really looking for here. And now this is exactly what we're looking for. Go ahead and move our workspace down so that it will loop a little bit faster for us. And let's go ahead and look at our check mark. And so probably at around this point right here, we want it to start tracing on using a trim paths effect. So if we open up the check layer, we can go to add and add trim path. We go ahead and open up the trim path effect. We can put down some keyframes here. And just to make things a little bit cleaner, I'm going to move the start of this layer using the left bracket key to where my timeline scrubber currently is. We're going to go forward in time 30 frames and we're going to lay down other keyframes and that is where it will ultimately finish. Let's go back to the beginning and we can see that if we do the end first, that actually is not in the direction that we want to. So just to make it easier, we can do the start all the way up to 100. And if we play that forward in time, we can see that it checks on. And we want to also add some good enter easing to that one. And we can see how this goes. So we can see because the enter easing is a little bit aggressive in the beginning, we don't really see any of this check mark being animated on. And we really want to be able to enjoy what's going on there and really see what is happening. So, so we want to have a little bit more control over how this animation is happening. And so I'm going to put another keyframe right when the trace reaches the corner of that check mark. And if we go ahead and we move that out a little bit, we can make sure that we it takes a little bit longer to do that bottom check and then it shoots up to the other one. And we're gonna go ahead and do an 
enter easing to that and we can see that it's going to look a little bit strange so it kind of jumps back and forth this is a moment where sometimes going into the graph editor can help and so if we go ahead and we take a look at the curve we can see that it's very very fast to go here and then it's very very fast to go here but then it slows down near the end so if we go ahead and we convert the keyframes to an auto bezier we can actually make it a little bit smoother so we want to get kind of a very, very quick in the beginning. It slows down a little bit and then it speeds up and then ends at the end. So now let's go ahead and duplicate this circle. We wanna have our little bit explosion type of effect. And if we tap U, we can see the keyframes that we already have. And we want to start from the size that it currently is. And we wanna go one, two, three, 30 frames in the future. And we wanna kind of scale this out. And then we also want the stroke weight of it to go from six to zero as well. So if we go ahead and take this at six, we can go ahead and turn it all the way down to zero. And you can see that it scales up and it goes all the way down to zero. But then we also have a fill on the layer and we don't want that. We can select the layer, tap the fill text, and then change it to none. We wanna make sure that this layer is clipped to when the animation begins. So if we hold Alt and do the left bracket, it will trim that layer to only be visible at this point. If we take a look right now, it looks okay. Let's go ahead and select these keyframes and use the enter easing. Now that has some nice impact to it. So if we actually duplicate this and we offset one layer. So here we have our finished check mark animation. You can see as the circle is scaling up, we have this accent circle on the outside shooting out as the check mark is starting. So there's a little bit of momentum carrying that check mark through. And then as that check mark finishes, we have a second smaller ripple that is happening as well. And so this feels a lot more exciting than just the static design that we had in our Figma over here. So let's go ahead and get this back into Figma so we can add it to our prototype. We wanna figure out what are the outermost bounds of our animation. So let's go ahead and draw a region of interest around the animation. And so it doesn't need to be 100% precise, but let's just get it as close as we can because we can also crop the GIF inside of Figma. So then we can go up to composition and we can crop comp to region of interest. And so now our composition takes up just the space that our animation takes. Trim the comp to the work area as well so that we only have what we need here in the comp and you can see that it loops endlessly and the way that i'll typically create a gif from this is using the plugin gif gun so if we go ahead and open that up we can make sure that our settings are all right we don't want it to resize at all we want the the frame rate to be the same as the composition which currently is 60 frames per second um, we can compress it a little bit we would like to keep the alpha um, so that it has a transparent background and we don't want an infinite loop, we just want it to happen once and then it to be over. We hit make GIF, it'll go through all of its magic and spit out a GIF for us. When the GIF is done, it will open up the folder which it contains it. And when you preview it on a Mac, it will automatically loop forever even though you didn't choose loop forever. But when we put it into Figma, it will only play one. And some of you may not have GIF Gun as a plugin, it is a paid plugin. And so if you're wanting a free way or, or an alternative way to export your GIF, I will link this article from School of Motion in the description. And it shows you how to step by step step export a GIF using Photoshop and some other methods. All right, so now that we have our check mark exported from After Effects, all we got to do is click, drag and drop that right into Figma and you'll see it will import as a GIF. You will see that in the fill, it looks like a GIF and you can actually look forward in time and wherever you pause on here, that will be the preview that we see here. So it's nice to put that at the full revealed animation so that you're able to see what is going on without playing the prototype. And we did export this at 2x and so if we go ahead and we divide this by 2 this should be the exact same size that we have here in Figma. And so if we drop that right in place where we need it, we can go ahead and hide the other group. And if we go back to our prototype and we go forward in time until we get to where we need to be after we save, you can see, boom, we have a delightful check mark in our prototype that makes us feel a lot more real and a lot more delightful. And that's how we use GIFs in our Figma prototypes. See you guys next time.